Mia, can I... On um, Councillor Cotter's uh, comment before on number, it is now 12. Can you please go up to number 12, please? Yeah, so that one, I... Um, I do, uh, rereading this, I do think this is obsolete um, now. It was from the original um, report, and if you recall from the original report, so one of the options we said was, well, there was two things. One, one, we were trying to note the fact that now that there's only two council directors on CCHL, automatically it was going to be reduced. However, one of your recommendations that you have added in actually is recommending asking CCHL to, to replace that. So that's sort of obsolete. The other part of that um, recommendation there was, in our report, we also suggested that if you, another consideration was only paying the directors on the profitable organisations. Again, that's not part of your recommendations anymore, so I am recommending that you take that out. Okay, okay are we, yep. No. Sure. No, I was we? just gonna say, could two and 12 be combined? Because they would go together. If you wanted to keep it in. I don't no, think we need no. it. I don't think it actually adds any value. I think it's confusing. So, scrap 12. I say scrap, I'm suggesting. We're recommending, recommending you recommending scrap 12. 12. So it's up to Kelly and I, is it? Yes. Yep. You happy, Kelly? I'm happy, scrap 12, thank you. Good. So we're now only voting up to 11 when it comes oh, that's to right. it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> right, thank you very much for that, uh, Leah. So we'll now move in to debate on 1A. Now, just so, just, uh, well, yeah, we'll do the debate first. Yep. Yep. So we've got anyone that wants to debate it? Just a quick question around the process then. You know, if this fails, you've got a foreshadowed motion. Do you debate the foreshadowed motion or are we put, how do you want to do it? Are we all talking to this in so one? If, if 1A no, fails, no. we go to Sam's. Yep. Okay. If 1A passes, we go, we go to, to Sarah's. Sarah's. So just one debate. One so debate. Just on the, yeah. Debate and we'll just, motion. it'll all flow into it, itself. So. Okay. So the foreshadowed motion and then the, you know, is, is, is then all wrapped up in, in this debate. Mm. Yeah. So please, one debate. So it's not just one, it's just one debate. And then we'll take each of the recommendations as we flow through so there is clarity of what you're voting on. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so does anyone want to kick off the debate? You can go on. Don't all speak at once. Victoria. That's unusual. <laughs> all right, Vicky. <laughs> uh, this is no disrespect to my other fellow councillors around the table, but for me this issue is pretty simple. Um, it's, we've received professional, independent <coughs> advice from a reputable organisation. None of us are in dispute about that. And what they say is that it is best practice corporate governance to pay your professional directors. I've got a long professional background, so I understand that and I appreciate that. And here I am as a councillor today, but I'm also a professional, and I'm bringing my professional brain to this today. It is right that there is a discount for public service, and I've got no problem with that or, at, at all. All of us acknowledge and accept that we are here at this table. But to me, voting against 1A just says quite clearly that you're unable to accept the professional advice that we've received about best practice and that you think that you know best. And you quite clearly, you don't understand risk. There is professional and reputational risk associated with director directorships. Lee has mentioned that, and I fully cognizant of that and, and I'd like to think that our councillors around the table also understand that. And by voting against it, you're basically saying boo-hoo to uh, professional corporate governance best practice. So today for the councillors, I'm, I'm really urging you to uh, use your brain on this one. Ignore the politicking, ignore the grandstanding, ignore the virtue signalling, and use your brain on this one and, and vote with that, because this is really, really significant um, for this council going forward. Thank you. Okay, anybody else want to have any debate? Mark's looking to put his hand up. Mark, Tim. and then Tim. Uh, Tim. Thank you. Um, I'm really in two minds on this. I know what we need to do. I know 
the extra work that the directorships that councillors get involved with um, brings. I've been on one or two boards in my time and know that there are significant workloads. I also understand the professional reputation and the risk that goes with being director. So on that, I'm inclined to vote for this. But, of course, I come from the Hornby community. And the Hornby community, from what I've seen in communication this morning from a, a voice in Hornby, are saying, don't support it. So I'm kind of conflicted. Um, at the end of the day, I think I would probably need to go with my gut instinct, which is support it. But at the other side of it, I need to listen to my community and not support it. So it's going to be interesting to see whether at the end of the day I go with my gut or whether I abstain. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you, Mark. Tim? Yeah, thank you. I am still in two minds about this. I mean, we talk about workloads. So how does a bit of money change your workload? With um, reputational risk, how does being paid change that? I, I'm still in two minds about that. I would have liked to think that um, if we are looking at um, risk, then upskilling councillors through the um, Institute of Directors courses would have been a, a good way to go forward right across the board and look at more of that, putting money into that. Um, I think that would have been a good way to go and maybe that should have been part of the discussion at the start. Um, I think with the future that we've got with the Northington's report, if the only thing you take away from that is a discussion about fees, then that is a real problem around this table. There are some very, very big issues coming to the people of the city and Northington's report, which I thought was outstanding, is facing some of those and we as councillors around this table have to pick that up and that, to me, is the biggest question and the biggest challenge. So um, I think I'll listen to the debate before I make my decision on this. Thank you. Tyrone. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, so look, I think, I mean, this is a, a conscience vote for me, and I think that city councillors receive um, quite enough money from the public purse. We all work very, very hard um, in different areas, and you're all... You're all worth it, every single one of you. Um, as for reputational risk, I'd find it odd if a city councillor would use their office to set themselves up for future directorships. That's not really my understanding of what our role is. Um, if you're worried about the fact that you're going to make bad decisions and that your reputation will suffer as a result, um, I would suggest directors' fees aren't your biggest problem. Kill it. <laughs> Very good. Have we got uh, Pauline, please? Yeah, I'll look just very quickly, because we did do a lot of this in December, I think we all spoke at length, but um, yeah, look, we, we have, Victoria's right, we have had independent advice recommending that it would be a good idea, but um, also noting in the report at 5.41 uh, that the independent advice still recognises that this decision lies with councillors at our discretion, and that's what we have to look at today. And every single day that we sit around this table, we face reputational risk. Don't worry about that. Um, so I think that um, the risk thing is something that's part of our job currently anyway. Um, if we chose to go down the path of re keeping remuneration, um, it kind of implies that those councillors on those boards work harder than others. And I don't accept that that's true that we've all got really full diaries attending lots and lots of meetings outside of this organisation and this building. And all these roles and commitments are actually part of the job that we sign up for. So I think that we should be considered already remunerated for all the work that we do. So I won't be supporting 1A. Thank you, Dr. Sam. Um, thank you, and I think I always say when there's a bit of a, not contentious debate, but a, a decent debate, they do, they do kind of bring out the best in people and I just firstly I guess commend everyone for doing it in such a respectful manner. I think that is um, particularly useful when we do these kind of things. Um, look, I, I think, uh, you know, I was talking to Tyler about it yesterday, I, I kind of look at politics being the art of compromise and going actually what is a way that a majority of people can work together in a constructive environment, taking into account the independent advice that's come through, the, the practical governance reality uh, of operating in this environment. Uh, and then how can we make that work? And so acknowledging that 1A would be my preferred, 
which in best commercial terms makes perfect sense. Uh, I do wonder, and that's why I foreshadowed a motion, and I'll speak to it here as opposed to later on in the interest of time, is, is getting that compromise, which is effectively a third, a third, a third. My view is you, you know, a third goes to the tax van, a third goes to the, wel the welfare fund, and then a third is a recognition uh, for that uh, additional risk. And I know people have different views on that risk, uh, whether it's reputational or legal risk. And I'm, I know uh, we're all well aware of our obligations in terms of risk, because if we muck up here, it's actually not us that goes to jail. It's Dawn. Uh, we are legally the only people in the country who are exempt from the Health and Safety Act, which I still, still find um, really unusual, I think, in terms of our decision making. Uh, so we just need to put that kind of thing in perspective. Um, but I think the other side of that, and, and no one comes to these roles for money, uh, but you will, it will be a, a very quick race to the bottom if you're not recognising that work that people do. And I think that you know Pauline put it really well when she said there is um, an element of work that everyone does uh, that we're already compensated for. Um, you know, but the juxtaposition of that really is if that is the case, we literally have a paper next, which is recognising additional work that the deputy mayor is doing uh, that other people would not be doing and, and paying for that. So I don't say that to um, create conflict. But what, I'm, what I'm saying, well, the mayor's a set, separate, right? but what, what I'm saying is that actually in a poll like that, uh, if the majority position is effectively to say that no, we should all be paid the same. Uh, then we do get in a situation and potentially the next paper which says well is that the case as well so my sort of view is you know i just think i just hope people have a really open mind to this uh, park the politics to the side and think what is the best way where we can get good outcomes acknowledging independent advice that reflects commercial realities um, but hopefully the, uh, the the that middle ground is really that 30 30 30 which is acknowledging we still contribute uh, on top of the public service discount to the mayor's welfare fund uh, some goes to the tax man and then some keeps uh, councillors uh, remunerated for that work. So I guess it really becomes one of those discussions in this paper for the next paper is are we prepared to uh, literally equalise everything and if that is the case that is fine but then it does really pose that question in the next one which is are we prepared to do the same. So I just want people to factor that into their thinking. Are we prepared to value the people we are asking to go and do additional work or actually are we not? And I think if you get to that point, um, you know, we, we just need to have that constructive discussion as a council, and I hope people can do that do that right now. James and then Celeste. Cheers. Look, I've previously served as director of various council CCTOs and have had the equivalent of about nine years worth of director's fees donated to charity. And I serve as an independent director outside of council, but as of today, if the council fees were paid, or as of tomorrow, it no longer affects me because I'm no longer on a board that pays fees here. But there's obviously additional work and liability when serving as a councillor uh, uh, on, a, on a board of directors of a company. But to be really honest with you, it's, it's actually not the additional workload that sells me on this. You know, I, I think that as councillors there are ebbs and flows with respect to workload and there have been times that any councillor uh, will be under enormous pressure uh, from their community, um, which others are not. And that happens to all of us at different times. The difference really though is, uh, is that the liability doesn't change, and as a councillor, Sam's pointed to that. You know, you, you're, uh, the remuneration authority actually takes into account that um, that you're absolved of a number of liabilities that company directors are not. And I think for me, that's the real crux of it. You know, under the Health and Safety Act, if a decision you make or don't make results in serious injury, as a director, you can be held criminally liable. As a councillor acting as a councillor, you cannot. So the Local Government Act absolves councillors of that responsibility and absolves them of prosecution when they're acting as councillors. Company directors, it doesn't. It doesn't matter if you're a councillor director or not, or who appointed you. You're either serving in a capacity on the board or you're not. And if you're not, then you're not in the gun, but different laws apply to you as a councillor versus a company director. So companies can often provide professional indemnities, but they only go so far. I think there's also a bit of a misnomer of uh, how far that protects you. Yes, you can be insured, so some of your legal fees are covered, but they can't stop you going to prison. They can't stop you being held criminally liable. They can't protect you against reputational damage. You know, and failing to undertake, undertake your director's duties mean you, means you can be hold, held criminally and personally liable. You know, just ask Jenny Shipley. And in fact, there's almost an unlimited number of examples. Uh, a recent one being um, uh, a company director from up in Auckland in about 2020 who was prosecuted under the Companies Act, a director of a roofing company who breached his director's duties acting in bad faith and conduct which resulted in loss to that company. It led to him being sentenced to prison for five years and six months by the Auckland Court. So as a director, the law is agnostic to who appointed you. It's agnostic to the Local Government Act. It's agnostic to the additional workload. It cares about the Insolvency Act, the Health and Safety Act, the Companies Act, director's duties. 
So, you know, I value the insight that councillors bring in their role, um, but at the end of the day, those people that sit around the table have a different level of liability and responsibility that the law views quite differently. Uh, and I think that it's uh, not fair for some around that table who have the same set of expectations and liabilities to be remunerated and others not. Councillors are well within their rights to donate whatever they want to charity, many do. Um, and I'd just like to finish on saying that we've paid for independent expert advice, which we've got. And if you want to make a political decision, you're entitled to do that, but it's not part and parcel of being a councillor. You can have that opinion, but the law doesn't share that opinion. And failing that, I'd support the one third, one third, one third, because I think it goes some way to uh, differentiating the difference that the, the law and Northington Partners have outlined. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Celeste. Uh, this is an interesting one. I mean, councillors, all of us, we're all expected to take on a lot of external appointments, and that just comes with, as part of our normal duties, and these all come with additional workload and responsibility. In addition to taking on a directorship, many councillors might also hold a large number of unpaid and voluntary commitments. The current policy of donating all director's fees to the Royal Fund ensures that all roles and appointments are equally valued and that this workload is distributed fairly across all councillors. Bearing in mind those that take on those roles by choice and um, are doing it by choice, and so I, the concern I would have is there would be an unintended consequence that people would start um, going for a paid gig um, over those that are equally valued within the community. For the same reason, I oppose partial payment of directorships, because if the rule applies for, in one case, I think it should apply in all. Instead of reinstating directors' fees, I agree with the comment by Councillor Scandurit that it might be more useful to review other forms of incentive for councillors, so looking at how we can perhaps provide um, directorship training so that councillors can be supported to take on a wide range of paid and voluntary roles so that we can uh, meaningfully contribute to all organisations across the city. I also would add that that would actually um, encourage new, newer councillors or councillors from different backgrounds to apply for those roles, so I actually think we'd then incentivise a broader range of people applying for these roles in the first place. Thank you. Yanni, then Kelly. <coughs> Um, thank you. Um, I appreciate that this is a, a interesting debate. I, I just want to start with kind of the advice that we've got. You know, the, the advice we also got from Northingtons around the port was that um, you know uh, a more commercial approach might see port worker remuneration at lower levels um, and drive better commercial returns, um, and that ratepayers could view the current situation as providing LPC workers with higher wages at the expense of themselves by suppressing earnings and dividends. From the port, and it goes on to say that the current relationship with the union, you know, workers will likely stay in place because the union explicitly lobbies to keep council ownership. Like, so some of the advice that we've got, um, I, I don't think really stands up to what I want us to be as a city. I don't believe that we should race to the bottom to pay the lowest uh, paid people less and, and put them on worse working conditions so that the people at the top can do better and get greater profits. We know through, sadly, the impact of the pandemic, where we thought there might be an opportunity to address the social and equity gap that was being um, uh, accruing, um, has actually not happened. In fact, what we know through the pandemic is that those who have something and are at the top have gotten way wealthier, and those at the poor and in the middle have gotten way worse. That is completely unacceptable. And I think this policy today, um, we should take note of that, that um, councillors are well paid for the role that they do. A number of councillors also equally are appointed to things that have just as much reputational or, or uh, risk as, as a holdings company. Um, you know, Central Plains Water, for example, uh, our water zone committees, our community boards, uh, a number of other trusts that we're involved with that make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis that impact directly on people's wellbeing. So I don't agree that we should pay council-appointed directors more. I don't think there's any evidence that would show that paying them more would get a better outcome. We, we just heard that we've had a, a, a few issues with CCHL at the end of the year, um, and if we remunerated our council appointed directors, would the outcome have been any different? I, I think we heard it, it wouldn't. I've also seen that where we do pay independent directors on our council companies, that there's been 
almost zero accountability or liability for when things go wrong. That risk always comes back to us as the City Council who is the owner. And you can look at things around recycling, you can look at things around city care, you can look at a number of things that our council companies have done over the course of recent history to see where the liability and the risk falls. It falls on us as the elected council for the city, not on the individual directors. I've seldom seen any director take accountability for when things go wrong, and I cannot support the increased remuneration to councillor appointed directors as a result. Thank you, Yanni Kelly. Yeah, thanks. Um, <clears throat> thanks, uh, fellow councillors, for the quality of the debate. Um, it's really interesting to see everybody's and hear everybody's perspectives. Um, I'm happy with the advice um, we've been given. Uh, I've spent 30 years working for corporates. Um, I understand and am comfortable with individuals taking on risk and being rewarded for it. Um, we're not all equal. Our qualifications are uh, often quite different. Um, and if qualified, I see no problem with paying council directors um, who've put in the work and experience to get those qualifications. Um, you know, this doesn't affect me because I'm not uh, currently a director, and I do uh, applaud what councillors Donovan and Scandrit have said um, in that um, directorship training. I think for us would be a, a, a really useful tool uh, if it was um, encouraged more. Um, as far as the mayoral fund is concerned, I mean, if we really wanted to, um, we could vote at you know five hundred thousand dollars a year, and so I don't think um, you know that's a, that's a, a, a strong argument there. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm comfortable with the advice we've been given, and, and I'm going to uh, support it. Thank you, uh, Jake. Um, yeah, I wasn't going to debate this because I think we're, we've actually spent quite a bit of time talking about ourselves um, on, on issues like this, uh, and actually we've had two cracks at this one now. Um, you know, this is not the type of thing the public expect that we're going to sit in a room and talk about endlessly. Um, but on balance, you know, I do accept some of the arguments around risk, but on balance I still think that um, you know, we're on these boards because of our role as city councillors. That's why we're there, and I think um, it's pretty obvious we're not there um, for our commercial nows, um, and you know, that might come as as, a news to, as news to some of my colleagues. But we are there. We are not primarily there for commercial nows. We're there to represent the view of the stakeholder and the shareholders of these companies, which is the people of Christchurch, and that is actually a role of which we are already remunerated for. Melanie. Um, I just wanted to add, because nobody's um, mentioned this, but if you um, are on a, on a board of an incorporated society and they have an employee and you, um, it, you are legally liable for their health and safety, so and usually people are not paid to be on the board of a voluntary organisation primarily, even if they do have employees. So it means that you can there are plenty of instances where people have their own risk and are not remunerated for that role. So um, I don't accept that the risk is actually a reason to remunerate um, many councillors who end up as board members on CCHL um, and looking at it from the time point of view that other people have mentioned, um, again, it's the same. There's plenty of us on plenty of boards um, who are not remunerated for our time there, so um, I can't really see any reason why we should change a policy that we've had for the last nine years. Thank you. I'll wrap it up. Um, I'd like to thank everybody. Oh, sorry, Mark. Oh, Aaron, sorry. Didn't see you, mate. Yeah, um, thank you. I'll just, uh, just add, a, add a couple of bits because I found this debate quite an interesting one. Uh, and uh, when, I, when the story ran in the paper um, the other last week or week before, I thought I'll read the comments and just get the feel of people that like to comment online. And it was pretty predictable. Um, it did make my blood boil a little because when uh, I remember the movie, the Brad Pitt movie, Seven, pretty well, when it, uh, it talks about the seven deadly sins and, uh, and sloth, envy and greed all come up in those comments time and time and time again. And it's funny how those are the things that really, really trigger people, uh, seeing someone else paid for work that they do more than someone else is a trigger, uh, not working is a trigger, 
someone else having more than you is a trigger. Uh, and it's interesting when that feeds into the debate at the table because I raised Parliament before for a reason. I already knew the answer. I'm not an idiot. Um, uh, the, a backbench MP gets a base salary, but a Cabinet Minister gets paid more than 50 per cent more because they have more work to do. And there's an expectation of everyone else in Parliament that those Cabinet Ministers uh, will do more work and will be all over those portfolios. I was a health board member for a number of years and I took it really, really seriously because people's health is and the staff of uh, 10,000 odd staff are part of that organisation and they expect you to take it seriously. So being on a board is a serious role whether and, and, and if it's a professional board that's paid, half them are paid and ha half them under this uh, regime are not, which sends out an interesting message, especially when this table talks about diversity and you want a more diverse board, but by the way, we don't want to pay you to be on there. What message does that send when you talk about the diverse people you're trying to put on there being underpaid anyway? Now, we will not pay them. I mean, that is a Mickey Mouse uh, and, I, and Brad Pitt's never done Mickey Mouse, but that is a Mickey Mouse mix to put into one debate. This is, and I'll go back, Victoria started it and started it really well with all her years and professional legal experience. She'd be looking at this and going, oh my God, how is there anything but one decision to make? And yes, it can be used as a political tool, and yes, it will be used as a political tool because envy Greed and sloth motivates votes, and we'll see it come out all year, and it will come out time and time again. But make, making good decisions on behalf of your city and taking responsibility in doing it. And I have heard examples of councillors that have been unpaid on rolls and said that they had not taken note of some of the agenda items because they were not paid to be there. I will not use names because I'm not a snitch, I'm not a narc. But that's the behaviour that will happen in organisations when people are given a big responsibility but not the recompense to be there. I remember all those things from seven. Thank you, Aaron. Anybody else? And I'll wrap it up. I'd just like to thank councillors for their input. It's been, it's been very good and everyone's been respectful of everyone else. It's, 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 it's been very good. Um, we have had advice from professionals, like uh, Victoria said, Northingtons, and I've, coming from the background I've come from, it, I was always told, you, if you're doing the work, you get paid for it. You pay for, get paid for what you do. Um, one of the um, things that I note is that Christchurch City Council in our region is the only council that doesn't pay. Selwyn does, WIMAC does, if, if people are on boards. Uh, I sat next to one of them on trans waste. And by the way, this is for your benefit down the back, Tina. I'm not a director of trans waste anymore, <laughs> just in case you wanted to know. Um, um, the, the, what I, I, I support this, but if it doesn't go across the line, I, I certainly support um, Sam's motion of a third, a third, a third. And don't, don't forget, if, if, it is a th if you are on there, you can give the whole lot away to charity. It doesn't matter. You know, there's no, there's no one way or another that should do it. So I will support the first one. If it fails, I will support the second one, but we'll see what happens. So I will now call for the vote. With no speakers, I will now move to the vote. Now, the one we are voting on, just to remind everyone, 1A. 1A. And if that fails, we'll go to this foreshadowed motion of... Could we have a division, please? We certainly can. Okay. So here is one A. Your mic's not on. <laughs> All right. The Mayor. Speak up, Megan. It's not picking up. Deputy Mayor Cotter. No. Councillor Barber. Yes. Councillor Coker. No. Councillor Donovan. No. Councillor Fields. No. Councillor Goff. Yes. Councillor Harrison Hunt. No. Councillor Henstock. Yes. Councillor Johansson. No. Councillor Kewen. Yes. Councillor McDonald. Yes. Councillor McClellan. No. Councillor Moore. No. Councillor Peters. Yes, uh, Councillor Scandrit. No. 
Councillor Templeton. Um, so okay, so we're. Oh, it's, six, it's good. Eight, it's written nine, nine, Ten <laughs> against. Ten versus six and one abs ab abstain. So that fails. So we now go to um, Councillor MacDonald's um, amendment, which is one uh, B. Have we got that one there? C. It's on C. Line sorry, it's C. On yep. yep. We don't know what happened to B. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> B just sort of fell out the side. It got removed. So I'm happy to second that. Okay, thank you. So, do we want division on this, or do we want? Okay. So, again. thank you, Megan. Okay, ready? Right. Um, the mayor. Aye. Um, Counts uh, Deputy Mayor Cotter. No. Councillor Barber. Yes. Councillor Coker. No. Councillor Donovan. No. Councillor Fields. No. Councillor Goff. Yes. Councillor Harrison Hunt. No. Councillor Henstock. Yes. Councillor Johansson. No. Councillor Kewen. Yes. Councillor MacDonald. Yes. Councillor McClellan. No. Councillor Moore. No. Councillor Peters. Yes. Councillor Scandrit. No. Councillor Templeton. No. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, uh, you don't. So we've got. Sorry, five, Megan. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it on the screen. I know. <laughs> very, very good. But the public may not be able to. <laughs> no. Okay. So it's um, seven, four, and ten against. So that is lost. Lost. So we now automatically go to uh, the status quo. That's correct. It remains. Status quo remains. Yeah. I'm happy okay. to move the remainder on block, whatever hasn't been moved, if that's helpful. Thank you, Jack. So, is this... Ah, okay. Sorry. okay, so we're now moving to I recommends one, uh, two, two, what are we up to now? To about to 11, are we? Two to what? So, if you want to move two through current. We just need to know what the last one. Because we took a few out. Two to fourteen. No, we haven't debated the fourteen. Fourteen's changed. Allow the crisis board. That's wrong. Fourteen. Are you on the right sheet? Still need three. Shall we just pause for a second just to get our ducks in a row? That's it. Oh, so it's just the numbering that's, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So if you're moving 2 to 13. 2 to 13, Mayor. Right. So, we now, sorry, Aaron, sorry. Just a question, can I just ask you? Just a clarification question, and it might be of the lawyers. I was just thinking around, uh, Number nine, which is reducing the turn, uh, the term. Uh, I'm just thinking, like, for example, Tim on VBase. That can he vote on that because it'll automatically preclude him from future, future appointments to VO. Yeah. So should be conflicted. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. I was just thinking. It to, yeah. Okay. Cool. He okay. can or he can't. So, hang on, hang on. We've got, got Aaron. Sorry. I just wonder if I can move an amendment, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. <laughs> that the volunteers who are appointed to boards have the option of where they donate their money to. Okay, I've got it. Hang on, I'll, I'm going to pause it right there because I oh. need to just know exactly what we're going to do. Um, yep. So if we just hang, have we pause? So, colleagues, advice please. Uh, technically you have entered into debate, so amendments are yep. um, passed. Okay, All right. thank you. So, so we're, we're back. Could I get the um, uh, Helen's opinion on um, Sam's point? Sorry, Councillor Scandra, uh, you're not currently appointed to the board, that's my understanding. 
So I don't think you're currently a director for Venus Otatahi, is my my understanding. So you can vote. To confirm, as you're not currently a director, that you're not conflicted from that point. Sorry, what I was, what I was meaning was, uh, and, I, and it, sorry, something because we, we chatted last night about it, is just around um, Tim's length of service on VO, the decision would automatically rule him out of being able to be put back on VO. Yeah, I'll, I'll but that's your policy in the sense of the recommendation, but it all, you're also able to make exceptions to that as Correct. well. Yeah, yeah. Not, so, so if the council comes as it, it, they could, if the council says, right, using Tim, I'm just using an example, go, actually, Tim's experience is so significant, we don't have any other people that are putting their name forward for venues, actually, we could make an exception, so you could do that. So in that regards, he hey, could vote Thank you, Leah. Can I just on, that, I just, just on that, because it's quite important, is that I've just checked the company's website. Tim is a current director of Venus Okay. So you are so Pauline a, a has been waiting patiently there. Well, just on that one, that why do we have, um, with a third, if the council considers warranted, why don't we just say, uh, with extensions or further terms, if the council, well, it doesn't have to be just a third, it could be, Two terms. But, but exactly what, what Leah, go Leah, yeah. you were just about so, to So currently, as, as when we appoint them, it's on a term of three terms. So yes, I three, know. Three. I support but, the two. Yeah, but I support to be blunt, uh, Pauline, you don't want to go to a stage where you're encouraging people to go to uh, more than uh, uh, three terms, right? You wouldn't no. say an extension of, of warranted. Just, uh, that, that covers what we're trying to do. Which is going again. All right. So anyway, as the um, and I will not say, there's, on nine. there's nothing to stop Tim if he wanted to standing for VO in the future by what we vote on today. Yeah, but but the council would have to acknowledge the fact that the, they're saying they shouldn't, um, and what would be the exception that you would to warrant it? Yeah. But so it's it does, nothing wrong with us. It doesn't okay. exclude him no. from going forward. So that that's cool. So right, what we've got right now in front of us is number two two. 14? 13. 13. 13. Thank you. So we want to do that as a block, or do we want to go down there? Is there anyone that wants to take a particular line out and vote on it separately? Um, if, if, I'm here for the block, block voting, but could it be just recorded that I won't be included and not, I won't be voting in nine? Yes. Okay. yes. We'll do that. yes. So everyone's happy. So I'd like to... No, no, I'll just record that I vote against. I just saw it as a bit of a package. So you're either going to follow advice and follow commercial best practice, which I think this kind of does, but I'm not going to cherry pick them. So based on how the votes went, I saw it as a package, so it's kind of disrupted it for me, so I'll just record my vote against. All of it? Yeah, yeah, I saw it as a package, that, that's why. It's not, not a big deal. Why I see, I see it as a, as a package. It all relates to the governance and appointments. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just to that, be... That's your choice. No, that's your choice, that's cool. Clarification so, on three. We've already made the decision around that those appointments haven't we the numbers yeah. yes we so, have so yeah. i'm, I'm going to put it uh, from items 2 to 13 noting that tim is not happy with nine and jamie's not happy with some others so i, I will put that motion all sorry, those in can, sorry just, Jamie. um go if you go can you scroll down just the one where you're doing the chairs on the um appointments what number is that now it's all changed Oh, yeah, cool. So, yeah, so I just want my vote recorded against 12. Thanks. Okay. So I'm going to put the motion of Yanni all... Yanni wants his vote recorded against 12. Well, yeah. I'm going to put the motion of all of those as one block, apart from what I've noted with the others. All those in favour? Aye. All those against? Nope. Aye. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. That's... And Aaron. Yeah. And Aaron. I don't need the vision. No. Okay. Is it Aaron? Let's carry it. Yeehaw. <laughs> right, shall we move on? Oops, we're moving on. Item nine. Yep, item nine. Councillor remuneration. Where are you running to, Leah? <laughs> <coughs> this one's not Leah's. She's very grateful it's not. <laughs> So, welcome, Helen. 